Despite being a huge worldwide hit in 1982, the Beatles movie medley has been erased from official Beatles history. In this video, I'll take a look at how it came about and why you can't listen to it today. Hi, I'm Andrew from Parlogram Auctions. Love them or loathe them, the medley was a true worldwide phenomenon and dominated the pop charts back in 1981. It all started in the summer of 1979, when Willem van Kooten, managing director of Dutch publishing company Red Bullet, walked into a record store which was playing a medley of Beatles and 60s songs. The piece of music which initially caught his ear was Venus by Shocking Blue a song to which he owned the publishing rights. Knowing that no permission had been granted to use the song, he correctly assumed that what he was listening to was a bootleg. The medley had actually been put together by two Canadian DJs, who specialised in splicing together snippets of songs from different genres and matching their keys and beats per minute. Taking the view that if you can't beat them, join them, he got in touch with his friend Yap Egamont and set about to beat the bootleggers at their own game. Egamont, the original drummer with the Dutch group Golden Earring, set about creating a pre-recorded drum loop, otherwise known as a clap track. The Canadian track had featured an 18-minute medley consisting mostly of Beatles songs, and it was that which Egamont set out to replicate using a group of Dutch sound alike singers. John Lennon's parts were sung by Baz Moyes of the 1970s Dutch pop group Smile, Paul McCartney's and George Harrison's parts were sung by Sandy Coast frontman the late Hans Vermeulen and Oki Hoistens, who had worked with Vermeulen in the band Rainbow Train. Egamont then wrote the memorable Stars on 45 chorus, which featured vocals by session singer Jody Piper. Then, along with musical arranger Martin Dusier, he set about stringing all of the tracks together. The result was an 11 and a half minute 12 inch single released on the small Dutch CNR Records label in the Netherlands, the day after John Lennon's death in December 1980. The 12-inch was then edited down into a five-minute version and was picked up by CBS Records, who released it in the UK on the 2nd of April 1981. It rocketed up the UK singles chart, reaching number two on the 3rd of May, and went one better in the US, where it topped the Billboard Hot 100 on the 20th of June. It still holds the record for the longest titled song ever to enter the Billboard charts, which is Medley, Intro, Venus, Sugar Sugar, No Reply, I'll Be Back, Drive My Car, Do You Want to Know a Secret, We Can Work It Out, I Should Have Known Better, Nowhere Man, You're Gonna Lose That Girl, Stars on 45. And the reason for that long title was because of copyright requirements for the use of the Beatles songs. Like many that spring, I was desperate to shake off the hangover of Lennon's passing, and to hear Beatles music presented in a fresh, new way really helped me shake off the gloom. I saw the single as a celebration of Beatles music. It was happy and fun, and like all good pop singles, gave you a rush. All those great tunes in five minutes was like eating a packet of your favourite biscuits all in one sitting, and I loved it. That summer, medleys were everywhere, and one of the first groups to jump on the bandwagon was the Beach Boys. Released in July 1981, the Beach Boys medley consisted of eight songs edited together by the legendary Capitol Records producer John Palladino. More about him a little later on. The single reached number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100 and became the Beach Boys' biggest hit in the US in over five years. However, it didn't even reach the top 40 in the UK when it was released one month later, where I was amongst the few people who actually bought it. Its thunder was stolen by cover band Gidea Park's medley Beach Boy Gold, which despite reaching number 11 in the charts, wasn't half as good and didn't have the sublime God Only Knows on the B-side. Another 60s group who also got in on the act was The Hollies, with their medley Holidays. 
This also used their original 60s recordings, but unlike the Beach Boys, had a clap track going in the background. However, the similar Holly Pops medley on the B-side to its credit didn't. The single prompted a memorable reunion with original members Graham Nash and bassist Eric Haydock, rejoining the group to mime to the single on BBC Television's Top of the Pops in September 1981, where they all looked to be having a great time, with even Graham Nash making an effort to play all the right chords. Despite that, however, it spent just five weeks in the top 40, peaking at number 28. And yes, I bought that too. It wasn't just 60s groups who jumped on the medley bandwagon. Some contemporary artists joined in too. Squeeze, for example, recorded a medley of eight of their hits called Squabs on 45, which they put on the B-side of their then latest hit, Labelled with Love, in October 1981. At that time, anyone who was anyone was joining in the medley game, even Elvis. The genre also produced its fair share of novelties, like Chas and Dave's Stars Over 45, to comedy gems like Star Turns, Stars on 45 Pints. Although the Rolling Stones didn't release their own, they didn't escape the medley treatment, which they got on Star Sound's third album, Stars Medley, in 1982. In late 1981, a dedicated team at Capitol in the US, headed by Randall Davis, the same man who had been behind the US Rarities album in 1980, were hard at work planning on what was to be the last in a long line of non-Apple controlled barrel scraping Beatles compilations. Real Music was designed to tie in with a theatrical re-release of the newly mixed for stereo A Hard Day's Night film, and compiled a selection of tracks from their five motion pictures. A Hard Day's Night, Help, Magical Mystery Tour, Yellow Submarine, and Let It Be. The album was heavily promoted by Capitol and was issued with a well put together 12 page colour booklet, which included rare photos, memorabilia, and a short essay about each film. It had a really nice inner sleeve, too. Ultimately, though, it was the cover art which took centre stage. This was the work of well known illustrator David McMacken whose most recent work of note had been the movie poster for the film 1941. However, although the concept was good, it's definitely the least popular aspect of this album. Keen to promote the album and inspired by the success of the Star Sound medley, Capitol decided to create their own official Beatles medley. After all, if it had worked for the Beach Boys, it must work for the Beatles. Putting it together was the next challenge, but really, there was only one man for the job, John Palladino, who, if you remember, had been responsible for the editing on the Beach Boys medley. John Palladino had joined Capitol in 1942 and had engineered, mixed, produced and edited recordings by all the legendary artists, including Frank Sinatra, Nat King Cole, The Band, Pink Floyd, Paul McCartney and many more. In addition to his sound production expertise, he'd earned the reputation as a master tape editor and specialised in shortening album tracks for single release. His work included edits for Wings' Band on the Run and Silly Love Songs. He'd also edited tracks on Capitol's version of the Rarities album in 1980, specifically its unique version of I Am The Walrus. But Palladino was from the old school. He did his editing freehand with just a pair of scissors with the points taped which he carried around in his back pocket. His colleagues named him Mr. Snips, and he was considered a master of his craft. Movie Medley was to be Palladino's final editing job for Capital, which he began on the 18th of January, 1982. Taking seven tracks from the Real Music album, it wasn't long before he'd sculpted them into a four minute medley. The promotional 12 and 7 inch of the medley featured a track called the Fab Four on film on their flip sides. This consisted of an edited six and a half minute 1964 interview, which had been arranged by United Artists to promote the film A Hard Day's Night. However, due to rights issues, it wasn't allowed on the commercial 45, so a substitute needed to be found. Magical Mystery Tour was the first choice but someone changed their mind at the last minute and gave I'm Happy Just to Dance With You its debut outing on the 45. The movie medley single was released two days before the real music album in the US on the 22nd of March 1982, but it was a different story 
on the other side of the pond. EMI heard it and didn't like it. They thought it was tacky and refused to put it out. However, the success of imports of the US single coming into the UK soon made them change their mind. So Parlophone R6055 was finally released two months later on the 24th of May 1982. EMI's fears about its credibility were quickly forgotten as the single shot up the charts where it peaked at number 10 on the 5th of June. The track even appeared on Top of the Pops on the 24th of June with a special promotional film. The single turned out to be a massive worldwide hit, charting in over 20 countries as diverse as Australia and Argentina. By today's standards, the editing on the single sounds quite clumsy, especially the one into I Should Have Known Better, and I think Palladino did a better job on the Beach Boys medley. However, unlike on the US disc, at least he got a label credit on the Parlophone label. Curiously, I'm Happy Just to Dance With You is in mono on the B-side of the US disc, but is in wonderful true stereo on the UK disc, where it sounds like it was cut directly from the stereo master tape, which of course it was. Real Music was released on the 29th of March in the UK, but despite the popularity of Movie Medley and me buying it on cassette, it failed to make the album chart and was deleted in February 1984. Movie Medley itself finally dropped out of the charts on the 31st of July and was never to be seen again. Even now, after anthologies, remixes, alternate takes, etc., Movie Medley remains the only official Beatles release not to be available on anything except the original 45. There's been no CD release, not even a download. You can't even watch it on YouTube. Any attempt to upload it gets muted or taken down, so please don't expect me to include it here. Why? Well, Apple just doesn't like it. I guess it doesn't fit in with their vision of the Beatles' legacy. And I think that's a shame, because although it has its critics, many people, like me, have good memories of it. But the good news is that if you're feeling really nostalgic, you can still, of course, buy a copy of the 45. There are plenty online via Discogs or eBay which will cost you next to nothing. Although I don't listen to my copy much these days, it does bring back memories of the excitement of buying a new Beatles single for the first time, and the joy and pride of seeing it in the charts, something which every generation of Beatles fans should have and cherish. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did, or even consider becoming a channel member to help me create more videos like this. But I'll say bye for now and thanks for watching.